This episode of Sessions with Steph is brought to you by our partner, Fearless Sounds. Francesca Sacerdoti, along with her amazing team, take care of every artist's needs when it comes to marketing, playlist placement, advertising, and artist management. You can follow Fearless Sounds on Instagram and Facebook, or just give them a call at 514-409-6061. Thank you, Francesca, and thank you, Fearless Sounds. And now, we present to you our latest session with Steph. Oh yes, the time has come. Guys, I'm so excited. Thank you so much for watching Sessions with Steph. Uh, I feel like a little school girl, school girl right now because I'm, I'm super happy about this one. Feast your eyes because this is going to be an awesome one. They don't need an introduction, but I will introduce them right after, um, right after our sponsors, of course. And of course, thank you, Lisa. Hi, Francesca. Hi, Hello. how's it going? Our first sponsor was Fearless Sounds, which that's Francesca, and you saw her ad right before this show started. Thank you, Francesca. You know, a music publicist is always needed, and she's fantastic at what she does. Um, our next sponsor, our regular sponsor, uh, Anthony Paterno, Nettoyage Diema. This guy cleans everything. If you have, a, you do a renovation, you can call him up. I've already called him. I've hired him. He comes. He cleans beautifully he keeps you posted as to how long it's going to take what he's doing um he asks if you're happy with the service anthony paterno is an amazing guy and his company really f awesome honestly i can't say too many enough good things about him he's he's great he comes in like i said uh gives you a price beforehand make sure you're happy uh sometimes he even does it in two shots because he's not happy with the first uh the first draft of cleaning and then he's like no i want to come back and i'm going to do another shot on it and it's going to look better and anyway i can't say enough about him but lisa let's give his information nettoyage dmi you could find him at 514-686-1581 uh, and um the email address to read, uh, reach anthony is info at nettoyage diamant.com or his website website nettoyage diamant dot com or at netway netoyage diama on instagram see he's basically everywhere so just like his cleaning it's everywhere yeah it's everywhere yeah he cleans everywhere right <laughs> yes he does big spaces small spaces you know diagonal spaces dark spaces light spaces oh, she's, on spaces, she's, on she's on a roll she's on a roll she's on a roll okay all right yeah. wow that's a uh, crazy concert stuff. spaces huh? there huh? you go uh-huh uh -huh. okay like, cool yeah. our next um sponsor is he's new so this is phenomenal guys yes, because thank you. Uh, thank you so so much we've got montreal fitness trainers yes we all need a good trainer in our life <clears throat> we all need to exercise we need to stay in shape we need to take care of our bodies because we put them through hell or at least i do and i'm speaking here with alcohol on the table but whatever that's a whole different story i do the exercise to be able to drink so and eat because <laughs> i love it so much but montreal fitness trainers guys they are located in on la Cordaire at 8370 boulevard la Cordaire in saint leonard um they are fantastic they have a team right lisa give the spiel for montreal fitness I trainers will spiel it out please so uh basically thank you mr ernie dominico um they're, what they do is they're qualified for personal training it's a personal training company with over 30 years experience so these Holy guys shit. know what they're doing and they've trained get this over four thousand members oh my god so they have 18 trainers on the team their office is uh, located at Leonardo da Vinci Center. Oh, it's at Leonardo da yeah, Vinci? Yeah, yeah, okay, They're okay, very, cool. very close. So oh, they cool. just opened May 1st. Uh, okay. It's called Physio Sports Center. So basically, it's, they offer osteopathy, uh, massage therapy, mm -hmm. physiotherapy, uh, podiatry. They offer all of these fantastic services. Um, so I just want to uh, also reiterate 30 years experience. So guys, these guys know exactly what they're doing. These are the people that you want on your side when it comes to health. And it's Montreal Fitness Trainers at gmail.com. Thank you so much, Mr. Ernie Dominico. And uh, hopefully, guys, you check them out. Oh, I also wanted to add podiatry and naturopathy. Oh, wow. Fantastic. Mm -hmm. We all need all of those services. All those services, I think. Guys. I don't, even, I don't know so, what half of them are, but whatever. Mm -hmm. That's just me. Um, amazing, guys. Thank you so much for sponsoring. Lisa, thanks for uh, all of that, that work up. you do behind the scenes there. Um, so now, guys, it's time. Oh, yeah. I have to mention uh, Lisa has and Francesca have a podcast called Let's Talk It Out, which is a sister podcast mm -hmm. to Sessions with Steph. So every Wednesday, we have an episode of either Sessions with Steph 
or Let's Talk It Out. You should yes. subscribe to both. We're on Spotify, we're on Apple Music, we're on all of that streaming stuff, and of course YouTube. So subscribe to both podcasts, they're really fun. Um, and now we're getting into the, the good stuff. Now it's the, let's, let's get this chat going, let's get this talk going. I've been, um, I've wanted to have these guys from the beginning, but I always said to myself, A, let me, let me do my time a little bit more. Let me do some more podcasts, get them under the belt. And I was always kind of scared. I was like, they wouldn't <laughs> want to come on to sessions with Steph. Why would they want to come on to sessions with Steph? So ladies and gentlemen, we have Dave and PY from The Damn Truth. Guys, thank you so, so much. Yeah, thanks for having us, man. Thank you for thank having you. us. This Appreciate is, it. Wow. Salud. I'm, uh, and you, salud. you seem great. Very relaxed. I'm, I, I'm, I've never been this nervous. I'm not going to lie. I'm, I'm usually not this nervous. You, mind you. Have a little have, more of this. The problem is this is non-alcoholized. So anyone who watches sessions with Steph, I start with, I start with a drink. And usually I have a, quite a few during the podcast, but I had a tooth problem and I'm on antibiotics and I said nothing would be worse than me fucking collapsing on, <laughs> on the damn truth like during a podcast, you know, drinking alcohol. But uh, we'll drink to you. Let's <laughs> cheers. I'm going to try this non-alcoholized stuff. I don't know if you guys are against the cheering, but non-alcoholic. You know, in the Italian culture, it's like you don't cheers if there's no alcohol. As long as it's not empty. <laughs> I gotcha. I gotcha. Uh, wow. He is actually not bad for mm. a little juicy, but it's okay. Um, guys, thank you so much thank for juicy. having us. This is uh, for coming on to the show. It's fantastic. Um, I'm a big fan. Let's start by thank that. Thank you, man. Appreciate and, that a lot. Thank and you. I've had so, quite a few people on this show and... Every single person has nothing but good things to say about you guys. Oh, wow. The band, the sound, the look, the originality. There is so much we can say. I would suppose we'd have to give a shout out to um, Lee and, and Tom. And Tom, yeah. We're not yeah. Sorry, uh, they couldn't be here tonight. Well, of course. But thank you for the kind words, man. Yeah, I don't really know what to say. That. It's very, very, very nice to hear. I don't know. Oh, my God. Just, you, you, guys, thing and... you guys are the dream right now. Like... Okay, you, you, you're touring, you're doing your own stuff. Your stuff sounds fucking awesome, man. Guys, I, I love your stuff. The sound is so unique. Um, it's original. It's uh, There's so much to say. I'd like to show actually a video later on or, or soon, yeah, whatever. Sure, definitely. I, um, and I noticed three albums. We are three albums in. I don't know. I know you released a single uh, about a year ago. Well, right now we're looks looks innocent. Look was, innocent is off our last record now or nowhere. So yeah. look innocent. Would oh, okay, have been, it's off the, okay. I think fourth, fourth. single, yeah. fourth single off the album. Okay, uh, but still off of the record now, now or nowhere. nowhere. Now or nowhere. Okay, Which, so we're on the tail end of this record. You know, yeah. we're doing a tour this summer and in the fall, and this will be the end. You know, most likely of the this promotion cycle, cycle for that record. For, for that, that record. record. Okay. Yeah. Is there more writing in the? There's writing. There's oh, writing. Yeah. Writing is oh, happening. Writing. You know, today. Sweet. Uh, we're writing <laughs> we just music, were. demoing, uh, and going into studio at the end of the summer. And when we get back from this next tour, you know, July, excuse me, June and July, we'll be in uh, Europe and the UK, come back to Canada, go to Vancouver to work on the next record. We'll be landing. We'll have about a week, week and a half to like get our bearings, and then immediately we're going to Vancouver. So it's going to be hectic. Okay, but that's so what a rock and roll record needs, you know. It, it just needs this, that okay, chaos. there's so much I want to talk about. Let's start with guitar player, uh, bass player. Sorry, bass drums, drums yeah. backbone. You guys are the you guys foundation, are the, baby. The foundation. You guys hit you it. You want to build a house? You call us. Right. That's what it is. And then the other two. Uh, guitar and voice, I guess, is the color that you add. Obviously, they make it beautiful. The front person is always the front person. You guys have a fucking hell of a front person. Man. She's Absolutely. great. Yeah. She's great. I mean, the whole band's great. Fantastic. Um, so the writing, does it start with this? Is it a, everyone pitches in? Is it like you guys just jam it out? Do you... A little bit of everything, honestly. Yeah. We definitely do a lot of jamming. We love to play with each other. So, like, you call and you say, guys, let's get together and have kind of like a rehearsal. We don't even need to call at this point. It's uh, every day. Wow. It's our day job. We're a pretty, good, uh, pretty good routine, you know? Mm -hmm. Routine. Uh, especially after this many years with the band, we kind of know 
our slots when you know we get together almost every day songwriting ideas kind of come from everybody they come from jams tom and leela you know contribute a lot because they're, they're together quite often they're they're a couple they have a kid and you know they're doing some writing at home as well mm -hmm. and they'll bring some ideas to the to the fold and py and we get into the rehearsal space and once it's in the rehearsal space it's kind of hard to know or to say what's going to happen exactly with the song but it kind of gets put in the machine and we work on it together wow yeah play it out move it to the computer do demos do all you know do all that stuff to prepare for the, to record but i mean ultimately we're a band that tries to bring the music onto the stage and perform it in a kind of like, a, you know, in a way which is uh, natural to us in a sense. So genuine, in, genuine, exactly. Genuine. So whatever we bring into the band, it's like we're going to play it together and then we'll demo it and then we'll bring it into the studio. OK, so you would, would you do a song live first just to see a reaction before you? We've done that before. You've done that before? <clears throat> yeah. That's pretty cool. Yeah, that's really. Like, but now it's yeah. getting harder to do that with everybody on their phones, you know. True. So you can now that yeah. the, the algorithm yeah. will have heard the new music, the melody, whatever, you risk losing a little bit of the ripple that effect that you might have had with something new, gotcha. brand new. Yeah. You know. Gotcha. Gotcha. Okay. So that's a lot. A lot of people ask why the Jack White was taking phones from people off the new tour and everything, and yeah. Yeah, it makes a lot of sense. You know, it puts people in the moment, and they get to have a glimpse of oh. truth. Okay, wow. We've played songs live that we thought were, I don't know, our next great big song. And then, you know, we never even go on to record them in studio. And yeah. Just, you know, they might have died on that stage too. Yeah. yeah which wow. is kind of crazy, but. Yeah, man. You know, I mean, I think moving. Imagine months of putting a song together and. Oh, it uh -huh. happened last time. We even played it at Ottawa's, uh, what was it? Not the Blues Fest, but that other fest there. Is it the Blues Fest we played? We played Ottawa outside festival. We played that song. It was called Cocaine back in the day. Now I don't know what it is. It's not even nothing right now. <laughs> now it's in four different songs. That riff. We played it live, man. There. People and it. Ne we were supposed to record it with Bob, and we never did it. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Maybe down the this line. happens. Yeah. Has it has it happened where one of you guys come in, or you know, one member of the band, or two? Let's, I guess because they're a couple, they come in. And say, guys. I have an idea. This is the whole song. Yeah, of course. And they, you know, they know exactly, you know exactly where you want to do and what you want to do it. And everyone says, yeah, man, let's do it. Uh, never that. Okay. But like for sure it's happened where we'll come in and be like, I have this song. This is my idea. It mostly starts. We'll send a, we'll send a voice memo to each other. Mm -hmm. And then someone will be like, Oh, what about this? What if this? It's like, you're bringing a recipe to everyone's like, here's the entire recipe, top <laughs> to bottom. What do you think? But everybody's got to love it. Right. And everybody's yeah. got different tastes and for it to be authentic, everyone's got to cross out a couple little things and add in their own I little liner know. notes. And then it becomes the thing. Even though it kills the original writer of something, an idea, you're like, oh, look at my baby. You know, yeah. look at this thing I made. But it's not the thing yet. You know, you it's, need all other members course, to make it their own. Well, in the end, the damn truth is the four of you. Yeah, it's the right? sum of all parts. It's the sum very, of all parts. Very much, and, yeah. yeah. Um, oh, my God, there's so many. My brain is going crazy. I want to ask so many questions. Um, let's, okay, let's talk about the tour. This is, I, I noticed you're going to Europe. Yeah. So already, like, the jealousy factor is... Hot. <laughs> but uh, a European tour. Uh, is Europe one of the hotbeds for, like, is the damn truth, like, a, a, I don't want to say a thing there, but like, is that a place? I know some, some bands have different areas where markets they're more popular, different markets that they're, is, is Europe one of? I mean, we like to go back there and play because the audiences are responsive. Okay. Every time we go back, it's, it's a surprise. It just kind of grows. So, I mean, we're going back in a couple of weeks and I'm excited. Don't really know necessarily what to expect. Hopefully, you know, we get more than the last time. But the way Europe is in comparison maybe to Canada and the music scene is that it's it's so connected. So you have vast population, many, many cities, big, big, big amounts of fans. Yeah. You don't really have to travel too far to get, you know, from market to market or big city. And you have just like a ton of rock and roll fans. And all of the clubs are connected and all of the promoters are connected. So it's a great place to plant a seed. You know, I say this to a lot of bands. In hindsight, for us, you know, we, we, we probably should have gone to Europe way sooner. Five years earlier, maybe. You know, but obviously you have, you, you, you put obstacles kind of in your, own in your sights, in your yeah. own path sometimes. But when we got there, we really realized it's a wonderful place for music. Yeah. Because the people are there and the abundance of people and the abundance of fans for all styles. And the respect for music is very true. Yeah. It's very high and people uh, don't mind spending their money on art. 
Oh, it's yeah. time. It's time. <laughs> <laughs> There's a bit of a different culture there. I mean, uh, you know, maybe we have the advantage of coming from a faraway land or something like that. It's hard to say what it is. But, you know, the people who are there in the room, it seems like the routine that they have is different from ours as, as music fans, music consumers. They go to their local club to see what's happening. Whereas yeah. I go to clubs here in town because there's a specific, there's a specific, specific band on yeah. a specific night. And I'm not going to go to that club on a random Friday. Because <laughs> chances are what's behind that door. It's not for you. It's not for me. Yeah. You know, <laughs> whereas over there, the culture is a little different. People yeah. are taking chances at their club because yeah. they know great bands are coming through. The promoters are good and there's a great scene. So it's been more vibrant. It's been more alive. And people come into the room and we'll talk to them after our shows. And they're just like. I didn't expect to see such a good band tonight. Yeah. Didn't expect to be so turned wow. on by what was happening on, on the stage tonight. I never, I didn't know you guys. Didn't know who was going to be playing tonight, but you know, I'm glad no, I was here. Glad. And and you don't really experience that in other places. That's true. No, they're so That's willing true. to take that risk that they'll buy 12 shows in the beginning of the year and then throughout the year just pick and choose out of their catalog which one to uh, go to, you know? Oh, wow. And just to pay for 12 shows in advance <laughs> sounds advance like, like what? mad here. Like, who would wow. even do that, you know? But in Europe, it's just like, the respect for art and music is insane. So where is it in Europe? It's starting off in Germany, I believe. This time, I believe. So Germany, yeah. and we'll be in the north a little bit. So uh, I think it's Netherlands, Belgium, <laughs> France. A lot of France. And Italy. we're down to Spain. And then, and then we're Italy. off to Italy. Wow. And then we head back, you know, to where we started and finish off. Uh, in Weird. In Netherlands. Yeah, the okay. Netherlands. So we have a short break. Mm-hmm. 11 about days. About 10 days off. And we start a UK leg. And we go off into the UK for about another two weeks. Sweet. Yeah. Well, okay. that sounds like fun. You're going to catch a soccer game? <laughs> I hope so. We've been trying to, but it's, it's hard to make anything hard. work. Last time we saw all the great stadiums, though. Oh, it's yeah. so fun. Yeah. I got to see Star Alliance Stadium, wow. uh, Borussia wow. Dortmund Stadium, oh, man. God, it was like, I was on the highway. We're going like 150, and the stadium just doesn't end. It just goes and goes and goes. And you're like, what the hell? This is past Walmart level now. We're yeah. in, we're in oh, yeah. like, I don't even know. Oh, yeah. you know? Yeah. <laughs> I went to the uh, uh, Barcelona Stadium. Oh, wow. The, uh, um, Camp Nou. Yeah. Whoa. What? It was a day. It was a whole day. <laughs> No, it was about can, five hours to visit the whole thing. Wow. Just was yeah. it during a match? Could you hear no. the, the the energy of all you those people in one place? You know what they do? They have a VR. When you do the tour of the stadium, you oh. sit in the stadium, you put VR goggles, and oh you relive God. the moments, which, which big moments, oh big goals and God, stuff. That's so cool. So you're in there, and there's all the fans around you, and you watch them score the goal, and everyone starts cheering, and you kind of relive that experience. Wow, it's really cool. It's something else. It's amazing. That's amazing. They should get that for Leafs fans. <laughs> 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 You just need the goals to come. I can't talk. So. I'm a Habs fan. <laughs> Are you a Habs fan? Okay, good. good. Are we all Habs fans? I guess. I yes, know. he is. Because otherwise, he'd be <laughs> stabbed in his sleep. <laughs> I you know. I, when I was younger, I really, really was, you know, very much interested and focused on sports. But I mean, you know, I got a little older. Music and yeah. all the other stuff. And I, you know, I, 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 I feel room. like it takes so much effort and energy just to have a conversation with a sports fan true i don't read the paper i don't watch rds i'm not watching all that stuff just to be able to have a conversation it's like i'll just sit out <laughs> the conversation. but i love to go see hockey games i love to go see soccer games but I, you know i know how the i know how the game works and, and i've loved the sports all my life but i don't follow what's happening That's i don't cool. know what happened last night actually it's first year i don't really watch hockey at all like Ooh, watch- bad year to miss yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, I, I you know I keep up to date yeah. now, but during the season, I was like, who's first? And then I saw oh, Austin, yeah. and I was like, okay, I don't want to know anymore. <laughs> yeah. I cannot go for that. But anyways, <laughs> look, sports is a form of entertainment. I like it right. too. I have season tickets to go to the Impact. Just sports have a big impact, man. Liam Gallagher tweeted yesterday, the day before, that if Man City w- wins Champions League because they just beat Real Madrid for nothing, they are going to Oasis win. is getting back together. Oh, That's wow. what he Are said. You serious? Yes. Man City's going to win. But they've been it's hinting strong. at it for a few years now. And I swear to God, if Man City wins, which is my team, I will be like, yes. And then Oasis gets back together. I think I'm going to ascend. Everything I'm going to ascend. <laughs> like, that's it. I'm gone. Dude, how is Man City your team? <laughs> uh, when I moved to Montreal, I was only hockey. I played okay. until double A as a kid where I'm from. It's oh, like wow. hockey is a religion. Gotcha. You know? 
and which is awesome to now be signed to Spectra, which is a subsidiary of the Montreal Canadiens organization. Oh. So I finally made it, Mom. I play for That's the Habs. Wow. <laughs> I play the bass for the Habs, but hey. hey whatever. <laughs> uh, and uh, I started working at a company where everybody were football fans. Everybody, everybody and their mom. So I eventually got into it going to the bar and stuff with people. And just Man City at the time had a very powerful team. Okay. It was uh, maybe 10 years ago when it was them in Chelsea, I think. Were okay. like, when, when and the owners came in and yeah, just spent like exactly. trillions of yes, dollars. Yes, exactly. They, they, they just <laughs> bought that big contract and everything. and Because they year. are just ridiculously stacked. So I just ended experience. up seeing a lot of Man City games cool. and getting to know them well. And, yeah. you know, I, that's why it was my cool. team. But okay. I'm not a, I'm not a fan like Liam is a fan. I could tell you that. I wouldn't get back together with Oasis if they won. It's a hell of a problem. Um, yeah, this is one question promise. I actually, this is the only question I actually prepared. Not prepared. I wanted to know because when I looked at everything you guys did, did, and I've been listening to you guys for a while, so the music I always loved. It looks like now, I, and I want to know if this is true or not. It looks like you guys got together at an age at a certain point, which I would say is about 2011, because 2012 the first album came out, right? Did you guys get together and say, "Okay, we're gonna do this. We're gonna do this fucking well," and you got your your ducks in a row right away from the get go, or was it more of a we're buds? Let's put you want to put a band together. Let's get together and have a band. And then, after a couple of years or shows, you're like, "Hey, man, I think we got something. Let's try to shape it." Or you know what I mean? Like it to me, it seems like you guys got together, four awesome individuals, and say, "Let's do this from the get go, and let's do it properly." And you had well, your idea from the get go. Dave can tell the story, but the biopic is obviously going to go with the former right away. Everything worked. It was perfect. We're super oh. smart and all that. That's what the biopic will say. But the real story. <laughs> I'll start by saying that Py joined the band in 2016. So Py okay. is not our original, okay. uh, not okay. our original bass player, though. You know, from the moment Py came into the fold, there there was, you know, I'll, I'll get to 2016 shortly, but, um, you know, we were young, we were all serious, we had strong ambition, but what happens with music, and I think this is probably the case with everybody, is that there's, 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 no, there's no real education, and there, you have no real way of knowing what you need to do to forge any type of a career in music whatsoever. Yeah. So you can have all of the kind of ambition and focus and drive, but we had, I, maybe we had most of that, but we had no knowledge and we had no experience. Wow. So, you know, we always have worked hard, but it's taken us many years to learn and we still learn and we're still, you know, doing our thing and pushing whatever, uh, you know, whatever thing which is in our way, try, trying to push against it and, and push our way forward. But there's no do this, this, this and this and you're there. There's no map yeah. and there's no, you know... And especially at the time, you know, when I was younger, we had no, uh, not necessarily role models, but um, you know, no real people that can really like shed any type of advice or, uh, or help in a sense, you know. So making your way in music, you can be serious and you could be talented, but there's so much which is outside of your instrument and getting to your rehearsal space and practicing and writing songs, which is important, which kind of need to figure out along the way. Yeah, you know, Py joined the band in 2016 after our first bass player left the band, and I mean, there was like an important turning point when Py joined the band. You know, unbeknownst to him, you know, things really changed dramatically when he joined the band. The band improved significantly. He brought an amazing energy into the, into, the, into the project as well. You know, I don't think necessarily we got smarter, you know, at like <laughs> our career or anything like that. Well, I joined before uh, Devilish Folk was getting ready to be released, but had not been yet released. So I joined right at the release of this record, so I got to do all the touring. And that tour was the fateful tour where the van exploded. It was my first tour two days in. And the van explodes, catch the fire, and it's like, that was really the beginning of, of this iteration of the band. was like, Welcome. burn everything, and then let's start now, you know? And wow. that's what happened. That was the beginning. <laughs> wow. We the were on beginning. the road. <laughs> yeah. PY was on the first tour. I think it was just ahead of the third date of the tour. Yeah. Probably PY's fourth or fifth gig with us. And our van caught on fire. And within two minutes, the whole thing burnt completely down. MacBook Pro, hard drives, passports. Like gear and everything or no? We were pulling a trailer. One so a lot okay. of stuff, you know, the vast majority of our, of our stuff was in, was in the trailer. And we were able to detach the trailer. A good Samaritan pulled off on the side of the road. 
grabbed me by the neck and he shook me. We were freaking out. I was freaking out. We I just filled that, the know? gas just to like tell everybody. We just filled the van with $180 worth of gas. So in our heads, it's boom, about to blow, yeah. boom, she's <laughs> going to yeah. blow. No, no, totally. But this man, like he grabbed me by the shoulders and he shook me. He's like, detach the trailer while you still can. So we detached the trailer and we pushed the trailer off. But what was in the van was all our personal belongings, acoustic guitars, computers, Ooh. phones, cameras. This guy lost his passport. Oh. You know, we lost a lot in that fire. But um, I lost my train that'll, of thought. Well, but I that, mean, you know. That, that'll well, shape you, that's for sure. <laughs> well, you know, P.Y. can tell the story because, I mean, that was his, like, you know, he <clears> barely knew each other. Out of the even. fire pan into the fire, you know, and then all of a sudden everyone's crying and it's like <laughs> we're on the side of the road in Sault Ste. Marie. It's winter. Nobody's oh, got any shit. clothes on. We're just like, all right, so... We're playing in Thunder Bay in two days. Uh, let's see if Thumbs Ford can give us an F-150 or something. Wow. <laughs> okay. Yep. And that was in, when you joined in 2016. 2016. Yeah. So really... you say 2016 is when things started, you know, following a good path? or I don't know. It's hard to say. Maybe in, this, in the cycle of promotion for that, for that album, we maybe put out singles a little better and got the opportunity to tour to different places. We did a, a North American tour. On the tail end of the Devilish Folk campaign, we did our first trip into Europe. We picked up some great gigs in that cycle also, and we toured with ZZ Top, and we toured with Rival Sons, and we toured we did with four July months Top. in the USA. We did four months in the States. So I guess things big. start to pick up, but it's, you know, from my perspective, it's always like a little step, a little step, you know? So feels like we're doing a lot of cool stuff today, but it's always been incremental day by day. I think it always is. And, you know, people will always say, oh, my God, you were an overnight success. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, yeah, except for the fucking 15 years and 10 million hours. <laughs> One I long night. That, that one, you know? <laughs> it's like, um, OK. And then you got to a point which, I mean, growing up as a kid, I think I'm, I'm older than you guys is for sure. But growing up as a kid, when the Black Album came out and Motley Crue, Bob Rock, that sound. Totally. As a kid, I remember saying, oh, wow, what a sound. That kick just bang <laughs> fucking hits me in the face, man. That snare. Wow. You know, I, and so you guys went with, he's, he was well known, well, well known. He's world renowned as. In the rock world, Bob Rock is, you know, he's Bob guy. Rock. His name is Rock, I think for a reason. Yeah. He you know, we were, we grew up on all these records too. You know, there's not a generation gap between us. There's maybe a few years, but classic mm -hmm. albums are classic albums regardless of the generation. They yeah. stay. So for us, for you, for these people, that's for true. these people, yeah, that's true. we all have the same records. You know, if you're a rock fan. So and you're right. Bob Rock did have a hand in, in a lot of these legendary albums. And if you don't love it, you hate it. And there's no difference, really. <laughs> it's true. That's true. Yeah. So we, you, uh, we you, got to work with, with sorry, go ahead. Yeah, that, that's what I was going to ask you. You got to work with Bob. He, he produced. He produced uh, our last record, Now or Nowhere. We set out a plan to reach out to 10 Canadian producers for our last record <clears throat> and, may, and record a song with a number of producers, you know, and try to have an experience where we went to different places and worked with different people in order to create this type of atmosphere and, and story around the record and, you know, create something interesting for us. So the first name on the list was Bob Rock. He was going to be the first one we were going to reach out to because, I mean, let's aim, let's aim big. But, you know, we were hoping maybe we get to do a song with Bob Rock. But it's Bob Rock, so he's probably not going to want to do a song with us because he's Bob Rock. Yeah. But in the end, you know, Bob Rock heard our songs and he loved our songs and he loved our band. So our plan of sort of like working with multiple people, you know, <laughs> for better or for worse sort of fell apart because Bob, Bob wanted to do the record with us. So we ended up doing a whole record with Bob, our last record, with the exception of a few songs because COVID kind of started halfway through the oh, process. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, and we finished up the record here in Montreal. But yeah, he heard our songs and he invited us out to Vancouver to work at Brian Adams Studio, the warehouse studio. And that was an absolutely amazing experience. I can imagine. Yeah. Wow. Very cool. And then that album came out which I've seen a couple of videos yeah. and I love the sound. I mean, not only the sound, you know, the, the actual sound, I like the sound of the band. I love this, the, the originality, the style. Um, how do you, I don't know. Like, I, I don't know how to ask this question, but how do you put that together? Cause you can tell you guys are influenced by a lot of rock and I, what I notice is it's 
such a, a rock from the 60s up until I would say, I don't know, almost now. Yeah, for sure. Um, how do you create your own in that? Because you, you definitely created your own sound with these influences. But like, I'll give you an example. I, I listen to Avenged Sevenfold, let's say. Great band, love them, good sound. But I totally, I'm like, okay, one song sounds like Metallica, the next song sounds like, I don't know, uh, uh, Aerosmith. I, I hear it so much. I can't pick a band, right? So you found a way to make it, it I, pick, I hear the damn truth. Hmm. How, did, how does that come about? That's like, fantastic. Thank you for saying that. No, honestly, you know, like I've, I've heard some uh, other bands and, you know, okay, that's <coughs> Zeppelin 2.0, you know, it's, it's great. I love it because I love Zeppelin. But I don't hear that band. I hear Zeppelin. You know, you guys, I hear the damn truth. So I look at the video with that 60s vibe in the TV set and it's like, oh, wow, that's so cool, right? And the sound is, the songs, the hooks are, are not what you normally would hear from a band. Yeah. How, how did you put that together? Like, I don't know if there's an answer di <laughs> to really directly answer that question, but, you know, from, from my perspective, I heard your perspective. From mm -hmm. my perspective, you know, all I could really say about our band is that we're four individuals coming from very diverse places and while we're all like fans of rock, we all have a little bit of a, you know, not necessarily a preference, Twist. but I mean, there's a little something about the music that we grew up with. I grew up here in Montreal. Our collaborators, Tom and Leo, they grew up in a completely different part of the world where, totally. where you know, the songs that, the, while there was much of the same music that we appreciated and enjoyed, it's like a, a lot, of, a lot of the songs that I grew up yeah. with, they didn't even heard of, you know? Yeah, exactly. And PY as well, you know? PY is also from a, a different place. So we're all kind of like bringing our own little shell of like musical ideas based on what we grew up with and what we love and how we've kind of like taken that music and applied it to our instrument. You know, I learned how to play drums through the music that I love and not necessarily through uh, all these other different elements that, you know, Tom and Lula bring or, or PY bring. So everybody brings something in and... And that's it what just it is, happens. you know? It just happens. It's just a magical thing, I guess. Yeah, and I guess it's also the same way as you kind of approach your day job if you're, you know, if you work every day. We, we end up at the studio and we try stuff. And often I find myself thinking, so what's my first, you know, what's the first thing I would do? Okay, throw that away. What's the second <laughs> thing I do? Okay, burn that. Now the third thing. Now we're cooking. Like, okay. let's start somewhere where it's like, this is not like the first or second or third thing I'll do. It's so out there that it will lead to something a little different than my first idea, you know? Okay. And I think that that's something you play with when you do it every day, all the time. It's you just got to try to do these mind tricks to yourself so that you don't probably because you don't get you complacent. Don't, oh, there you go. That's a good, but it's probably because you don't actively try not to be a bad. Like I think a lot of times they tr not, no, they try to develop their sound Based by, upon uh, based upon others' sound, I think maybe it could be. It's yeah. just the organic way that you guys. It's very hard write. to work that way, you know, to say, "Hey, let's sound like this band." It's really hard to make a song sound like a song that way. Yeah, it often sounds exactly. like uh, blocks put together, you know. Yeah, just a lot of the mu new music today does sound that way, you know. Speakers don't lie. True. It's True. The way it is. Wow. Okay. Um, that's. <laughs> um, do you guys mind if I watch, we watch a little video? I want to watch do a it. video. I, I, I'm going to, and uh, you know, the, the podcast, I'm going to show the video and then we'll be in the corner uh, cool. talking about it. But I like both, you know, Tomorrow or Look Innocent. Is there one that you guys prefer? I like both. Um, I, don't know, yeah. I don't know which one. Uh, Either way, whichever you're feeling, man. I found Tomorrow really, the video really cool. That's a cool story. Okay. They both are cool stories, but yeah. So Tomorrow, actually, everyone says how amazing that video is, but you remember when we were like, it, I'll tell you in a second, I guess. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's, let's watch this. Television so already it starts with, like... To the whole world. A medium through which the United Nations can better <laughs> How cool is that? Just to start off with that. It's like, come on. I haven't seen this in a minute. <laughs> Is 
this one of the songs that Bob brought? Uh, yeah. I also did the okay. What a look for you, man. Oh, my God. <laughs> All a shaving downstairs. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's a serious. Oh, those little fruits. I forgot about those. Limes and lemons. <laughs> It's true. <laughs> totally true. It is I, true. I imagine it's true because they said this story, but wow, that's. I wasn't there. Yeah. However, <laughs> knowing these people and knowing them intimately, I'd be on the shadow of a doubt they were naked or worse. <laughs> that's. Uh, so it gets pretty hot there, too. It's like uh, 46 degrees. Yeah, they embody a little bit more of the kind of 60s, 70s rock and roll aesthetic, you know, more than myself. I mean, more than PY as well. I mean, it's like They lived, you know. I forgot about the glam bit. So many to watch this time. <laughs> no, you don't rewatch it? No. Your brain is always When you good. make it, you have to go through the process of seeing it over and over and over and working on all the little details. Then once it's done... It's like PTSD to watch it again. Close the suitcase. Next. Yeah, next. Yeah. Work on the next project, the next. Was it you guys that came up with the idea of this look for this song? So what happened was, one night we received an email, we need a video tomorrow. The radio station in England needs a video like tomorrow we're like well that's impossible how about end of week so we shot this in eight hours oh my god are you serious we shot this in eight hours his wife did all three makeups everything basically by herself with my girl helping her out as an assistant but like oh my god she is a pro for Cirque du Soleil but still it's like oh, really? well, that's amazing to do all of the concept, that, it kind of came. It maybe came a little bit from Vanessa. It came a little bit from yep. the band. The, we worked. With, we did work with a film production company to, to make this video, and we did have a kind of brainstorming <laughs> session. And the idea, obviously, the ideas they start so outlandish, and then you kind of rein it in. And you know, I think the concept behind the video was just like you know, rock and roll bands through the ages. Yeah. You know, how can we really do the '60s, do the '70s? I guess. The other look is kind of like 80s, 90s, 90s glam yeah. type holy ish thing. But it's, it's genius, honestly. And I think, I guess maybe when you're, when you're under pressure and you don't have enough time to think about something, you just come up with a, I don't know. Personally, I work the best was, that way, man. It was whirlwind. I mean, we did, uh, we did this in half a day. Yep. Seven, yeah. eight hours, yeah, I mean. Seven, eight hours. But it's on a budget of zero dollars. <laughs> <laughs> wow. For, for, um, you know, like social media and whatever, a world that's online all the time. I wanted to click that one right away. It's, it's the first one that just... It, oh, you know, that's your, awesome. Your eyes go to this one right away. Yeah. <laughs> wow, what a great tune, guys. Oh, wow. I haven't seen that in Fantastic. Anything. I haven't seen that in a while. Yeah. yeah. Wow. It's actually great. It is very, yeah. very cool. Nice. And that one was actually it mixed by Vance Powell, which is the guy who does all of Jack White's stuff. Forward. So okay. that's why it sounds so damn okay. like chunky, you know? Yeah. He's just great. He's got this chunky boxiness to his sound that I love. Oh, he so also did This Is Who We Are Now. Okay, yeah. wow. I was very, very um, upset at myself because I was working because you guys played at Laval Senior. That's right, yeah. Um, with other friends of mine that were on sessions with Steph as well, the, the Chair Warriors too. Oh, wonderful, yeah. But I really, I was dying to come to that show and I couldn't because I was working and it was close to home and I was like, oh, of course. So Classic. Upset. <laughs> so upset. 
Um, and I saw videos of people that were taking videos like, no, how am I missing this? And I'm trying to picture how does this, you know, the, the school, you know, high school, parents, right? the high school parents, and it was the cool, people I that were there said, cool. oh my God. Like, we got good, we got good vibes from, yeah. from everybody there. It's I mean, really we, good. you know, regardless of where we play or what the context is, we love what we do. We love the music. Benefit, we love to perform. Benefit, right? I mean, you know, we're right. going to give our all regardless, you know. It's for the Terry Fox Run people Foundation. Were, people, were, yeah, that's right. yeah, people were receptive and they loved it. And it was a bit of an all-ages show. So you had parents and you had kids, teenagers go to the school were, were there as well. And yeah. I mean, it was awesome. That's a wow. It's a, it was like, oh, it would have been such a treat. I was <laughs> bummed out. But anyway, uh, when's the next Montreal show? This is my question. <laughs> well, we announced today on August 5th it'll be our homecoming show from Europe and UK. We're playing Rockfest Santé Mentale, oh. uh, which is a festival that's been going on for about four or five years now, maybe more. It's a 10 year anniversary. 10 year anniversary, yes. August 5th? August I can 5th, count. Yeah. Rockfest years. pour la Santé Mentale. Super, super, super important organization. Yep. It's actually Mental Health Awareness Month this month. And, uh, well, I mean, this is a festival that we have participated in in the past. This is their 10 year anniversary, three days of rock and roll bands, lots of local bands. We're closing out the Saturday Wow! and, uh, it's awesome. And it's for a really good cause. Yeah. So that is amazing. Yeah. That that's really amazing. We get back what the third, we get back August 1st, first. Okay. Perfect. So we'll have four days and then party. And then party. <laughs> well, I mean, we'll be, you know, we'll be ready to go. Cause we'll have done basically five Five or six weeks of just like almost night after night playing. So Pretty much, yeah. We'll be good. We'll be good to go that night. Now, here's a question. Because um, now a lot of bands, what they'll do is release kind of like EPs and then before this album or whatever, or an album, but before the album comes out, they release the songs beforehand. It seemed to me that now you guys did an album and then released song by song. Mm -hmm. um, are you? I don't know if it's the new way it's not my field so I don't know how to release music and I always got stuck playing gigs and you know I never I, I did write a bunch but I didn't record enough I regret that <laughs> uh, I did you know some recordings with other people I love it I love doing it it's just I was always gigging you know for corporate parties or you know casinos or whatever that I never went so I don't know this scene it seems that the new way is releasing songs and then an album comes out <coughs> Something like that. I mean, uh, is that like is that what the next project is, or is it going to be like good old school album? No, we'll have a record for sure. But you know, why I think the big difference today versus the past is today the market and the fans demand quality out of every single song, every single song. Whereas maybe True. in the past and you would have a record too of yeah. releases. Yeah, can't be years apart. You know, years of, years ago, you would have a, a record with maybe two or three great songs, and you have like a bunch of record tracks, and those songs, not that they didn't really matter, but I mean, they were never really get released in the same way as the singles. Whereas right. today, I think because it's a singles market, and the attention span is a little shorter for people, the market demands higher quality music more frequently. So, you know, as, as a band, you know, we're looking at not necessarily making a record while we are making a record, we're looking at making a record of singles. You know, whereas maybe a band 20 years ago would be looking at making a record with three and having singles. three singles on it, you know? Gotcha. <laughs> so, but, it, you know, it is a good way to release music because you can give a piece of music that you've put so much, like, love and energy and attention into. You could give it an opportunity to shine. Have its own campaign. Yeah. You know? And its give own it, story, its own everything. And give it to the fans and give it to them with a music video and give it to them with, you know, visual assets to kind of, like, to promote that song and let that song really be something special multiple times and i think yeah. that's cool you know there's always a ripple effect it dies mm -hmm. next the ripple effect it dies next it's the throwaway it's the throwaway day, days <laughs> the throw yeah mm -hmm. well you can everybody think of samples as a throwaway, sample but... sample next next not throw away it's garbage throw away next what's next yeah. you know yeah. but i mean we're making a record yeah, you'll we, be able we will to hold it in your hands record. 10 or so songs yes. record Fantastic. we are record people we love yeah. the experience of a record the same as totally. a film Totally. Don't read to me what's on the back of the tape. I want to experience yeah. it for myself. 100%. Start to finish. 100%. You know? Okay. Is there a timeline for this record? Well, we're recording in August, yeah. you know, <laughs> and it's my understanding that there's some people who want a single in the fall. People want a single right now, so. Yeah, oh, yeah. So hopefully in the fall we'll have a single and, you know, much like you're alluding to, hopefully a, a, a sequence of singles. Yes, a sequence of and singles the throughout the year. The and the record will be available, you know, throughout that process. Right. Basically. Okay. Do you have a, I remember back in, you know, our day with the albums, every album had um, 
I don't want to say a theme, but an sort of, idea, sort of, a concept, an idea, something. a concept. A you know, we're gonna go. Uh, could be lyrically, could be visually. Yeah. Could we be have various visual. things in the air right now, but nothing concrete. So okay. can't really okay. say any words about it, really. I, Other than it's definitely gonna be really cool. I, I, absolutely, <laughs> I'm, I'm excited because I, we are too. We're expens- experimenting with all kinds of stuff, so it's gonna be. We're so excited. Right songs now, you know, too, we're like, stockpiling a Google Drive full of songs, yeah. and there's. You know, basically, we write songs about our lives, the things that we go through. So it's hard to say what the record is really about because mm-hmm. we'll have to take these kind of like 30 songs, and hopefully a few more, and distill it down to 10 songs. So yeah. or we're number. in the process of kind of like sending music back and forth with uh, Bob. Oh, okay. So Bob is still doing... We're working on the record again with Bob Rock in August. Great. And, you know, he's got his favorites, but we haven't necessarily chosen which songs are going to be recorded. We still have, you know almost like two months before we go into the studio, we still have an opportunity to, yeah. to, to write a few more. Iron out some kinks and do yeah. it. Okay, that's really cool. Now, I noticed, um, I noticed I got a time signal there. That's good. Not that I ever listened to it, but it's fine. <laughs> you <laughs> um, got that right. Yeah. Um, so I noticed that um, you guys went on tour with a couple of pretty huge bands, right? What was that experience like? It was ZZ Top, if I'm not mistaken, right? That was amazing. How we fucking were- cool is that? Dream, that was like a dream still i don't believe it happened actually <laughs> but wow. i was so excited i didn't sleep for four days <laughs> we playing guitar the whole yeah, time. all the whole time basically and stopping for jack daniels at all the saqs but it was really um we got to do the maritimes too so great crowds arenas oh, yeah. too yeah. so it was just like our maybe our first like night after night arena experience, you know, yeah, absolutely. I think it was where you, you're arriving and, you know, three 18 wheelers are backing up for the load in, you know, and you're just walking in and there's just like ants. Everybody's just doing their job, brrr, stacking up wall of vamps, do the thing. You do your sound check. Everything's a blur. All of a sudden you're playing. Then you're like, you're done. You're like, what's happening? So cool. So yeah. good. And wow. we learned a lot from them and we got to meet them and they were super nice. Wow. Yep. Um, Dusty the, was funny as hell. He's the funny one. Rest in peace. Rest in oh peace. my god. Yeah. Yeah. Quick question: Do you play guitar as well? Like, do you? I do. Music? When I write, I write on That's guitar. What I was guitar or you... piano, but mostly okay. guitar. Oh, you play piano as well. Yeah. They have any other instruments? Scratch or? the chords. I know yeah. my chords, and I can put the chords together. And I could do okay. that and bass. You know, I follow along. But I have to mention the tambourine as well. I play the tambourine. But I mean, hey. dr- drums is the instrument. Tambourine is hard. Yeah, for okay. sure. Yeah. It is I hard to say. It's, a, it's one of the harder instruments to record live. Like, for sure. To stay to, well, to keep in time the whole time. I know? had a teacher in school that told me he paid for his house with his tambourine wow. in the 80s. Yeah, That's really they cool. They record on all the Quebec stuff that you hear, like all the classic stuff. Okay. Yeah. So all four of you sing, right? We all like make, like we all make sounds with our heads. <laughs> I don't sing at shows, but I mean, every once in a while when we're doing our demos, we force Tom him. is like, get on the mic, we need some okay. backs. And I, I personally love to let it out, sing into the mic with the headphones. It's, yeah, I, it's I, I honestly feel you know, something special there, but mm-hmm. it's, you know, I'd rather just drum and not yeah. have this thing. I got you. Face. I totally feel you. <laughs> I know. I know. That's great. I seem to be getting away with it. That sounds good. Whatever yeah. you guys are doing, it's working. You do a good job on the mic. Goddamn right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It really adds something to the live show. If I could, you know, speak. Sorry, I, you know, I'm, not, I'm speaking out of turn because I don't really sing. But, you know, I can say when I go see shows, and I go see a lot of shows. Whenever those back vocals are nice and prominent and up front, and it's, it's a beautiful thing. And it adds a lot to the show. So, yeah. I know these guys. Remember the suite? I remember those suite, crystalline yeah. backup Beautiful backs, yeah. laser like backups it really wow. adds something nice to the show so these guys are pushing themselves to support always working Lila. at it yeah and in the uh, like on your albums when you you know this song had a lot of backups in the mix it's like a perfect blend it's not too overpowering like that's right it's not heavy on the vocals in terms of backups pretty hard to overpower leela i have to well, say but, but you know <laughs> and when intimidating it's, when it's a knob when it's a knob yeah, it's yeah, easy. yeah, yeah in yeah. studio and so the mix is is like perfect for Fantastic. for the band you know yeah it's like the instruments are, are you know that kick is like smashing the snare is beautiful uh and that they're just the back, I hear the vocals, they sound great, the harmonies are nice, and they're they're perfectly placed in the mix, not yeah. too up front, you know, because it would change the ba- the sound of the band, yeah. right? Like Extreme yeah. is like all vocals, yeah. and then, you know, he rips a solo, but it's all vocal, you know, and you guys found a way to 
add those vocals in, but perfectly in the mix. I, I, I admire that. I mean, yeah. while we were in studio, the ideas were coming out to kind of add these elements and with the help of Bob to arrange the songs in a specific way that, that really highlight the songs. But when the songs went to mix, I would love to say that the songs were meticulously mixed, but they were mixed. The record was mixed so fast. Really? Yeah. <laughs> My God. You know, and so we fast. worked with mix engineers who worked in the old way. So they didn't really mix digitally. It was mixed on an analog console. Oh, real to real. And basically, for example, Vance, you know, he had the mandate to mix two songs per day. So he would mix a song in the morning. And once we said it's done, he strips the board and he does the next song and we're not going back. So basically every, every yeah. song was done in four or five hours. When you say done, it's, it's, it's really done. done. It's done. Once it's done, reset, done, done. that's yeah. it. What? Mix is gone. Yeah. Oh my so, God. It takes me longer to do the podcast. <laughs> yeah. But honestly, we liked it because when we first heard about it, we're like, oh shit, that's so stressful. But then once, wow. it, once you say like, yeah, this is it. And it's done. You can't go. You can't go back, even though you want to. It's human nature to just go back, like, oh, but what if? Oh, but this. Oh, but nah, it's you done, man. You can go Next. back, but do it's this. a whole new mix. Yeah, and you're paying for another mix. Yeah, you're, not gonna, you're not gonna get a point, advanced you know? pal to go back. Do, do, do the um, like drum sound, let's say, because uh, you know I, I, I play drums as well. And then, do you cater the drum sound to a song? Like, Definitely. Like, yeah, you do? Okay, Definitely. I don't know. Yeah, like, well, I, I mean, you know. I would be lazy and think, okay, that's we, re we recorded the song, we recorded the record like pretty quickly, but I mean, before we started each, each song, whatever we could manipulate quickly, like changing snare drums and changing cymbals, change bass, change guitar, stuff. whatever it is. Yeah. Yeah. We did that stuff, but we didn't bring in for drums, you know, we didn't bring in different drum sets and, and do no. stuff like that. But, you know, for different songs, I think you did some mic changes on certain yeah, parts. We did, we did some stuff, you yeah. know. Okay. I'm a fan of doing that, but I mean, we have to f we have to strike that balance between time and 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 the amount of work that we need to get done. So, we were able to work relatively quickly and do a bunch of stuff. Different songs got different drums and different basses and pedals and stuff. But wow. you know, yeah. we didn't rebuild the studio. Like for example, when we did Devilish Folk, we recorded a song per day and we stripped the room every day. And every single day we reset wow. up the room. And every single day I set up a different drum kit. And a different, it was a different mic combination. It was basically almost like a new album every day for every song. Wow. But we didn't do that necessarily in that way. For but to be record. fair, at the warehouse when we arrived, there was like a drum kit befitting of, I don't know, the drum king himself. <laughs> and like there was maybe three mics for each mic, you know, and wow. a kick drum in front of a kick drum. And also it was a <laughs> Abe Laboreal Jr.'s kit, uh, Paul McCartney's drummer. Wow. Yeah. Okay. So it was so. a very serious kit. And it's like even if we didn't change the drums every song, like they had a selection of three mics for each part so and like nice. two kicks like kicking into a kick into like six <laughs> mics and six mics here it was like so it's many like, options on one mic on one kick wow. it's on one drum before kit. bob rock made his like name as a producer he had made his name as, as an engineer yeah that's where so he shines he's, you know his expertise before he even started to make records was that he was assisting some of the best record producers already in rock and roll so yeah. You know, the way he sets up a room is really intelligent. It affords whoever's going to mix the record like an enormous amount of like options. So yep. I had a great drum set. It was an amazing drum set. But I mean, it was surrounded by dozens of microphones. And the mix engineer doesn't necessarily need to use all those microphones, but he could pick and choose the tones and the sounds that he wants to create a vibe. Okay. So when I listen to Now or Nowhere, even though it's the same drum kit in the same room, you know, every song gets something a little different just by virtue of those combinations, you know? Okay. So. Sorry, this is a geek question. What was the drum set, if you don't mind me? The drum set was a combination, actually. It was a big Ludwig kick drum uh -huh. with Gretsch toms. 24? 26. 26. Wow. Yeah. Uh, Gretsch, kind of vintage Gretsch toms, one uh -huh. tom, two floor toms. And snare drums, we used a bunch of different Ludwig yeah, snare drums. Snare. Black Beauty and Superphonic. And, What's uh, your favorite drum set? Like or what? What? What do you play? What? What kit? Do well, you I played with? with I played with a Ludwig drum set, and I'm not I'm not sponsored by any particular drum company. But the okay. drums that I love the most are, are the Gretsch drums. You know, I don't I don't own a Gretsch drum set, but we've done every Damn Truth record on a on a Gretsch on drum a Gretsch set. Drum set. Yeah. Okay. Big booming, dark kind of bold sounding Sweet. drums. Sweet. Yeah. What bass do you play? I have a signature series. Actually, it's my own. Okay. It's called the Lightning Dove. It's Sweet. by a company called Bunting. Okay. We wow. actually all play bunting guitars, Tom and Leela as well. Oh my God. We, we each have our own signature series. We change a lot, so like you won't notice it, but yeah, it's basically, um, I base it off of my favorite guitar in the world, Paul Stanley's Black Firebird that you see on Kiss Alive. Gotcha, yeah. 
and uh, we basically flipped it. Spanish, um, the same wood from a humidor, Spanish um, cedar. See, okay. Yeah. And uh, flamed Bosnian maple neck with uh, vintage Thunderbird pickups in basically a flipped Firebird body. Oh, Super cool, yeah. Sounds really awesome. Otherwise, I have a 78 Rickenbacker 4001 and Ooh. a 2009 uh, Fender Jazz Bass American Deluxe. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. Wow, amazing. Um, okay, now... I'm going to get into segments that we normally do on sessions with Steph. And I'm so glad to have you guys. It's like I want to do every single segment. I don't want to miss anything. Let's do it. But um, the first segment that I normally do is called Worst Gig Ever. Does it mean the worst gig uh, in terms of playing wise? I don't mean it that way. Like something, I guess Van Vern, uh, Van a Van Burning is probably mm. <laughs> would be that. But I mean like on stage, something wild or something crazy. Hmm. Um, yeah, like, I mean, I can remember the worst gig that I ever played and it was not a damn truth gig, but I got hired to perform with an artist mm -hmm. and this artist brought, you know, he took uh, conventional, he took pop songs and he did them in the most unconventional way possible. It was complicated. Every song was multiple time signatures and all this stuff. And it was like, okay. I was so unprepared. <laughs> the musicianship, the caliber was super high and I was so unprepared. And we went on to stage, we went on to the gig and the, the first two, three songs was just like, oh, my God, <laughs> please send a lightning bolt through my head, you know? And I swear to God, the skies turned black. We were outside. The skies turned black and pouring rain just started to come oh down. Oh, my God. And I was saved by some sort of a divine force, but I was about to just, you know, I was embarrassing Reputation myself. Reputation over. Wow. Oh, my God. I'm so embarrassed that, that you know, that, that, that I had to put the band through that, but... You know, I was saved by that thunder. How did you not know the saved. songs? You just it arrived with charts so, or something? It was so complicated, man. The gig was so complicated. It was a fusion thing. Yeah, one of those. All kinds yeah. of... I'm not even going to say who it was, but thank God it started wow. to pour rain. Thank <laughs> God. But sometimes you panic too, right? Sometimes when you actually think about it, then all of a sudden... Yeah, like, yeah. And then you forget everything. It's, oh, my God. It always sucks in the moment, but it's always such a great story later. It you is know? a great like, story. So that's why it's hard for me to say I've had a bad gig, but I've had gigs where like, I show up thinking I know what's up, but then the singer's like, you know what? The set's different. Here's some charts. And then I look. Uh, I had to do one. It was a Queen medley. Okay. So it was just like all of Queen's hardest songs mashed together as one, like part You're after part it? after part. Well, he gave me a chart, right? Sight reading, yes. It yeah. was 12 pages. I had to tape it to the wall and tape it to a music stand oh, on the stage somewhere. And wow. I played the gig like this. <laughs> <laughs> I swear. And not that it was a bad gig. It's just I remember sweating bullets sweating, when he told me, yeah. by the way, we have a Queen mel medley. And Ooh. I was like, oh, Queen, that's John Perfect. Deacon. Great. Yay. Anybody can just play John Deacon. Let's go 12, 8, 4. No problem. Sure. No problem at all. That's some opera in <laughs> yeah. there. Yeah. Perfect. Why not? And well, it was just such a weird gig. But And was there ever like something uh, at a damn truth show or uh, like... Hmm. What was the, what was the? I mean, we've been through it all with the. I mean, all my amps I mean. have broken. Like, oh, my worst gig. I now remember. Okay. We were in Toronto. It's 2018 or something. I don't know. Our manager had managed to get like all of the suits. All the suits were out that night to see us in Toronto. You know, okay. we were playing. I think at the Horseshoe, all the industry folk. Uh, this was during the Devilish Folk Sessions tours. Sure, sorry, yeah. and. Uh, we start playing, the room is packed, it's going so well, boom, the amp goes. I'm like, what the hell is happening? I can't hear the DI. I'm like, oh shit, nothing's working, DI's not working. I start hitting stuff, I'm panicking, you know, I'm young. <laughs> yeah. I don't know what's going on. I start unplugging stuff, and the whole show basically, I couldn't, I couldn't get the sound. But like, it wasn't like, like near no the sound? end, no sound. Because I couldn't hear the DI, oh. I wasn't in the in-ears then, and I don't know if maybe I had a mon or no mon. Sound or I don't man know. did have a DI playing in the house, but on stage we really couldn't yeah. hear. So I didn't know, I thought the sound was like gone, gone. So was it my bass, so is it in my board? <laughs> Is it the DI? I don't know. So I was just like God. panicking, basically. Wow. And it was real bad. Real bad. The next day, reviews came out in the paper, and it was no. like, ah. Yeah. So you know, that's things like that, oftentimes <laughs> to the audience, it feels, they seem to say that they're, it's imperceived, but I mean, to us on stage, it's like moments like that. It's just everything. You're on fire. Everything crumbles. <laughs> Your skin's you know? on fire, yeah. you know? You're really, <laughs> it's so hard to pick, to pick yourself off the floor and then like get yourself get yourself back to the momentum that you had before totally yeah. and i mean let's be honest we all the crowd doesn't know this but we've all had stupid things happen that you wouldn't think about yeah. this my brother called me like a week ago he's on a gig 
the panic, you know. He, Where's your fucking mixer? I need a fucking mixer. Jesus Christ. You know, he was, I go, oh, he's dead. He goes, as the, he was playing, I think, a wedding, the bride and groom were coming in and his mixer's shutting off. Oh, oh shit. So the music's going Timing. Shutting. He was losing his mind. Oh, a wedding, and too. He's, he, right? He says, uh, and I, I, I tried calling because then I go, okay, I'll bring it to you, whatever. He had no time. I spoke to him the next day. What the fuck, Mark? What happened, man? He goes, dude, the power bar. Ah, uh, it was. Classic. He thought, but by the time he figured it out, so in the moment, panic. Yeah, DJ yeah. took took over, and it worked. But in the moment, he lost. He goes, "I unplugged. I rebooted. I unplugged this that." I, by the time I figured out, it was the power bar. I had to redo the whole. It's like I had to set up from scratch again because he unplugged oh, everything. everything. Shit. But it happens. Yeah. Is that defective power? It wasn't even his. That's yeah, it, was, yeah. it wasn't mine. They, it was. Uh, so he didn't even know it the was venue a part. Had. Yeah. But anyways, okay. Is wow. there any like, um, I don't know, brawl? Not brawl, but like anything crazy with some crazy guy, that person or... Last time we were on tour, we had a TMZ type moment, actually. Okay, and, see, uh, I love that. I love these On stories. our last show, uh-huh. we were in the Netherlands. I don't know what story you're about to tell. <laughs> <laughs> I really don't. Remember when all those like, I mean, they looked like rugby players. Uh, we were in, it was after a show we're at some uh, like bar having a drink before we head home. Yeah, I think it was in the Netherlands, maybe Germany. And all these like pretty jacked guys, they look like rugby players or football players or something and oh boy. plastered like only Europeans know how to get plastered. <laughs> and they keep calling me Kasabian, you know, because they think I look like Kasabian. And we're just trying to eat. I don't hear them. These guys are hearing them because I'm away and I'm eating something really spicy. So I'm like, <gasps> eating and they're like, oh, Kasabian, Kasabian. I hear nothing. I'm crying, like snot, everything, you know? And then <laughs> eventually they start like getting in our faces with their phones and stuff, trying oh, to like, no, 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 yeah, trying yeah. to be oh, so aggressive. They, you were, they thought they were... we were, I, I was Kasabian and oh, I was ignoring God. them. Okay. And then they got mad at them. And then they eventually followed us out. To the point where, as we're getting into the Mercedes Sprinter, Leela had to kick one guy out of the van. They're banging all over. The van is shaking. There's like 15 guys, like, jacked, shaking the van, screaming at us. No idea what they're saying. Kasabian, fuck you, all this shit. Oh, my God. Leela kicked one in the chest as we're slamming the door. Phil, our tour manager, just drives away. We're like, what the fuck just happened, man? Holy shit. (laughs) TMZ for real. That's amazing. (laughs) Well, it's not amazing in the moment. I'm saying that's a story. God, I that, wish I was man. Kasabian. <laughs> How cool was, was Leela kicking the guy in the chest? Well, I mean, last one in has got to kick the dude, you know? She's, wow. She's military trained, so yeah. I mean, she, she, she yeah. kicked yeah. her solid. Yeah, wow. Yeah, yeah, Great yeah. singer, but I already mentioned yeah. it, but she's really good. I forgot that one. Yeah, that was, I totally wow. forgot about that, too. Put it out of my mind. Was it was tell scary. The story. One of our previous managers, I remember, at a, at a gig we were playing. We played in Ottawa, and uh, we finished our show. And we decided to go check out another club and speak to the manager about maybe coming in to get a gig. So our manager is, is trying to speak to the bouncer about getting in. And he manages to get in. But, you know, we turn our backs so to have a conversation. And they, he literally comes flying in the air out of the club <laughs> over the, the ribbon. <laughs> they threw him out like on uh, Fresh Prince of Bel-Air every time, <laughs> every time uh, Jazz gets thrown out gets of the house. <laughs> And they, the bouncers punched him in the face. You know, he he had gotten approval. He had gotten approval from the first bouncer to go in and talk to the manager. But the second bouncer thought he was just barging his way his way in, knocked him just, out, oh and God. launched him out of the club. Wow, the things you do for rock and roll, man. Now that is a story. <laughs> These See? are the people wow, we great. hang out with. <laughs> great. Um, okay, I'll go into the next segment. This is just simply called first thought. I'm going to ask a couple of questions, and first thought, just. Kind of like to get to know you. Um, and then we'll do the last segment, which is Francesca's segment, which is the coolest one. Uh, so let's start off with favorite food. Hmm. Meat. <laughs> you know, my favorite thing to eat is a chicken sandwich. I know it's uh, cool, know, really? pretty lame, but I love all the Italian stuff. But I don't know, Mayo? Something. Mayo, yeah. Chicken, celery, a nice Need toasted mayo. bun. There's just something about it that makes me really happy. I'm with you. Meat, I like that. That's uh, So no, uh, we're not going vegan tonight. <laughs> it's not going to happen. Mm. <laughs> right. I'm a fan myself, but... Uh, a uh-huh. good steak? Mm-hmm. A good steak? Like, is that, what, is that, like, is that your go-to meat? Would uh... it be a... 
Yeah, I would say probably, yeah. Like a Either a filet or a ribeye. A ribeye, yeah, yeah, nice. Yeah, are nice. my two favorites, depending on the day, with a good Chianti, and I'm happy. There yeah. you and go. A smoke yeah. at the end and a limoncello to walk Sweet. home with. <laughs> Perfect. Um, favorite TV show, since you said Fresh Prince of Bel Air. Favorite TV show. Oh Holy jeez. Of all time or right in this very moment? Of all time. The Office. Oh, cool. I just got into it a couple yeah. weeks ago. U.S. That was my, my casino gig. My brother's like, you got to watch The Office. To, <laughs> On our to. break, we're classic. watching The Office. It's pretty tied, The Office and Seinfeld, though, I have to say. They're, they're like neck and neck. And yeah. there's... I really have to think, man, because I really don't watch much TV, but I've always loved Saturday Night Live. I don't even know if it's on TV anymore. It I is. really watch almost no TV, but I always loved, set, you know, from like six years old, I would sit on the carpet, you know, Wait try to, to stay awake as a kid and, and watch it my, my whole adolescence. I would record every episode. That's a great idea. Rewatch it. Cool. And cool. Musical guests. I always loved Saturday Night Live. But, okay. I, you know, I stopped watching TV. I'm lucky if I get an hour of TV in a week. Oh, wow. Okay. Uh, cool. Cool. I'm not a big yeah I try I, I am a buff but I just don't have time um, okay so now we're gonna start getting into like a little bit of the nitty gritty a little bit harder questions um, well this one's not that hard what's the favorite show you've been to The Smashing Pumpkins oh, oh cool. yes good one melancholy and infinite sadness oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. Not I think for the first hour, I had tears in my eyes. <laughs> really? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> there was a standing ovation uh, when Billy came out for an hour. Nobody sat down. Wow. Yeah. It was not necessarily my favorite band, but I saw Nine Inch Nails perform at the Bell nice. Center, and the concert the was nice. just absolutely That's... mind-blowing. I believe it was in surround sound. And where I was sitting, I had an amazing vantage point of the stage. I was far from the stage, but I was facing the stage. And what I saw, the production and the lights and just the moving screens and all that stuff, it was just like my jaw on the floor and like an out-of-body experience. It was absolutely mind-blowing. Mind-blowing. An amazing show. Memorable. Okay. Yeah. Okay. But I mean, cool. pretty far down the Second list, person. that's my favorite band. Yeah. You know? we, we heard that before, yeah. right? Yeah. 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 And, they, was, and whoever, I can't remember who it was that was on the show, they said... Nine they said the now. same thing, yeah. and they both said, uh, you know, not my favorite band. Yeah. Good band, but nothing more than that, but the show blew them Unbelievable away. Unbelievable show. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Cool. I'm going to say, what's the first thought that comes to your mind when I say Nickelback? Um, oh, I had it. Look at that photograph. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have a problem with Nickelback, to no? be honest with okay. you. Know? I mean, they're, they're a killer band. They're one of the biggest bands in the world. I know. If only we can get half of Canada to hate us that much, we'd be so successful. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently the whole Nickelback thing started off as a joke, uh, maybe on Saturday Night Live or something like that, where somebody used it as like a little bit of a joke and it just spiraled into this like it's cultural weird. phenomenon. Like, yeah, everybody seriously. loves to hate Nickelback, yeah. but yet they're the biggest band the in the biggest world. Biggest band in the world, yeah. As a kid riding around in my girlfriend's dad's truck as like literally a kid, like 10, 11, I remember listening to Santa Monica and Photograph, and you're like, yeah. man, this shit slaps. <laughs> <laughs> you know? So here's a, uh, another question. It's kind of a little off topic, but the Metallica Black Album. My son now, he's 16, so whatever. He's heavy into rock and, and metal and stuff like that. He's like, oh, the best band of all time, but they were traitors. Do you guys follow that? the the traitor idea the idea where they no they sold their souls when they did the black album like went pop kind of thing you're saying? yeah mm -hmm. like when they did that album they changed their sound of course bob rock did it to me it got me as a fan to be quite honest i liked metallica before when that album came out i loved their sound i was like oh my god this is great but that was they me. Were, you know they were much more like punk or thrash or, or grunge or whatever genre that is unpolished they were much more like that before mm -hmm. and it's really something that happens in not only the playing which they got better over time obviously as everybody does but it's an arrangement thing and that's something that bob is incredible at he'll mm -hmm. make the sloppiest part even though you'll play it as sloppy as you did the first time yeah just in his arrangement now it sounds amazing you know it's mm -hmm. it's really his magic he can yeah. make anything sound good. He'll for be like, sure. what if you, what about, you know, in some of our songs, for example, Lonely, the first chord of the chorus, we had a different chord. Mm -hmm. And he was like, what if, and he took Tom's hand and he went, what about this one? What does that sound like? And that was the first chord of the chorus. Lonely, we all went, well, there's the song. <laughs> <laughs> you know, wow. just that, just going, just that, 
now the song works, you know? Wow. That's so cool. What about you? Do you I don't think... know what to say about that because it's, you know, you can't really say something without hurting a person on either side of the arguments, you know, because inevitably as a band, what you're, what you're trying to do is try to reach more fans because, you know, if you don't grow as an artist or if you don't grow to a certain point, inevitably the operation stops. Got to evolve. Because on one hand, you have to evolve, but you also have to grow and you have to be able to to sell tickets and you have to be able to sell records and you, and you still have to be true to your music. So, you know, what ends up happening is bands start to learn the craft of songwriting. So maybe they lose a little bit that kind of like uh, raw, you know, uh, the organic thing, I guess. I don't even think that's the, necessarily the right word. There's just like an instinctual thing. And you start to gravitate towards the things that you know make songs maybe exciting, but a little more conventional too. And inevitably it led to their success. And I don't think they regretted it for a second because a second. not only are they one of the most successful bands in the not world, but they'll second. probably one of they'll be one of the most unforgotten bands in yeah. history. You know? totally. I tried to like I tried to explain to my son at a certain point, I said, but how do you know that that wasn't them? Like you're saying, you know, they changed the way they did things. I think they just have more money now. And, and they're they're you know like they eventually recorded with an orchestra one of their albums right how do you not how do you know that they didn't want to do that from the beginning but just didn't have money to do it and now they do like you, you can't and also judge begs the question for your son like if not for the black album would he even have met metallica yeah you know if totally. they had stayed in the dirty totally. punk th trash kind of metal yeah. thrash um would they have been as successful would it have lived on as dave says as one of the bands that will be the most I don't think memorable so. bands of all time i don't think so maybe not and come on the beginning was sad but true like yeah well, unless, come you on. Really, <laughs> unless you can really know the intention and understand the intention then you can yeah. make that judgment yeah, because if, totally. you, if you know the intention if you know the intention was not necessarily pure yeah. then you can say well you sold out you did it you know you didn't do it for the music you did it for yourself you didn't yeah. do it for your fans you did it for the money then you can call it selling out but it's, it's hard to know what's happening on the other side of the they seem story, happy, you know? right? They yeah. seem happy performing. Just saying the, songs. the intention, you know. If you're yeah. doing it, Here's we're gonna write. So we're gonna produce the next record and fuck everything we've done in the past. We're just gonna do it so we can, you know, sell that million records or whatever, whatever it is. I mean, okay, that's 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 a goal. It's maybe it's a noble goal. There's nothing wrong yeah. with that. That's for sure. But you know, if you're doing something like that, maybe for the wrong reason, then maybe you can fault them. But how will you? Have how you'll never know. So that I guess goes to the next question. What's the first thought when I say Lars? <laughs> baby face I got to see Lars perform mm -hmm. from 15 feet away oh actually yeah I was close but I stood on stage and watched oh. Metallica perform now that is awesome I was really fortunate years ago I was working in the music business as a sale salesman and it was an era where we were afforded lots of free concert tickets doesn't really exist as much wow. anymore but yeah. I mean we got uh, backstage passes to see Metallica backstage. through, through wow. Tama so we're backstage and I got to watch Metallica from on stage Crazy. now growing up Metallica was one of my favorite bands and you know I gotta say that particular tour what I saw from 15 feet away was really discouraging you know really? yeah wow. at the time at the time but yeah. You know, they've been touring a lot lately and I've been watching a lot of the videos and Lars, you know, I think he's been putting his time in on the pad because he's a lot more solid than he was when I saw him from 15 feet away. And also, I, you know, I go back and I watch this, this film that Metallica did called A Year and a Half in the Life of Metallica where they went into studio with Bob Rock and they produced a, a film about it. Mm -hmm. After we went into studio with Bob Rock, I, you know, I rewatched the movie just to see if I could connect some sort of parallel between our experience and Metallica's. And it's like, Lars slams on the he plays he played he was playing really well back then so you know maybe somewhere along the way you can lose your chops yeah. but i have to say what they're doing now and the stuff that i've been seeing and listening to is really solid <clears throat> okay cool yeah sometimes you can always blame the budweiser groove too you know yeah true. some nights you're just not on that happens yeah. right it happens to everyone it's a warm night 12 beers in now i'm hitting hard <laughs> now i'm hitting hard guys first thought best guitar player of all time tom shemmer oh nice <laughs> oh what an answer man <laughs> Great answer. I like Jimi Hendrix. You're a Jimi Hendrix Man. guy? Best front person of all time. Ooh. Ooh. I don't even know. Best front person. It's a tough one. Because there's so many artists that we never even got to, got to see. They died before we were born, you know? Yeah. 
<laughs> I wouldn't even have an answer. Mm, I never got to see him, but I would say Scott Weiland, maybe. Oh, nice. STP? Yeah. Like, in terms of energy? In terms of but energy. But if we go in the classic rock, I'd say maybe Freddie Mercury. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Freddie, yeah, he's my I he's would my say, pick, like, yeah. if he hadn't died, like, being a front person will be changed forever, you know? True. Maybe Michael Jackson, but let's stay away from that. That's a, yeah, that's a touchy yeah. subject. Yeah. I, I saw Paul McCartney perform, and I cried several times. Yeah. So I'll say Paul McCartney. That's a good one, too. Yeah, that's a good one. Never been, never been said on... Uh, I guess, How are yeah. we doing with time? Over, we way over. We had to say bye a long time ago. <laughs> <laughs> guys, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry, guys. <laughs> I don't, I'm trying to be that, you know, the, the don't respect worry at the all. time. Okay, so I'm going to go into the best one now. Uh, and this is, we end the show usually with this one. This is a Francesca Fearless Sound segment because she came up with this question. Nervous. But now you have to take, you get to put together your all-time band. Mm -hmm. You pick every member of that band. It could be a five piece, six, seven. You want an orchestra, you know, who's playing? You want two guitar players? You want a keyboard player in there? Pick every instrument, the singer, to sing, whatever you want. What would you do if you had the band? Other than the damn truth. Well, I would be on the drums, but I would have another drummer with me. <laughs> I, would, I would play alongside John Bonham. Ah. And on the bass, I would have Flea from the Red Hot Chili Peppers. Wow. And I had Jimi Hendrix on the guitar. And on vocals... Uh, one guitar? Know, like, yeah, one guitar. One, guitar. one guitar is enough. He can handle it. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, you said Freddie Mercury and... I, to have Freddie Mercury as a front person would just be That's fantastic. very similar to my, the band I put together. Extremely similar. I would say I'd have Keith Moon on drums. Nice. Jacko Pistorius on bass. Oh, yeah. Steven Tyler as the front man. Uh-huh. And the guitar player slots open every night. We can have whoever we want. <laughs> Stevie Ray Vaughan first. Then we go with Jimi Hendrix. And then we'll have... Uh, uh, who else? Mm, 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 mm. I guess we'll throw in Mick Mars just for the drama. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, see if he's gonna show up. Yeah, after we get through all of the lawsuits, then we'll have no. uh, who else? Uh, Angus Young, obviously. He's my first yeah. choice, but we'll have him for the big one. For you know, the big one. Yeah. <laughs> wow, great band, great uh, choices, yeah. guys. It's not bad. We have infinite budget, by Too the way. Too many guitar <laughs> players. Yes, there is a lot of guitar uh, players. No, there's only one. You know, but every night is different. Just keep it interested, and That's they have the it. best band, and the singer with um, Steven Tyler's Joni Mitchell. Oh, nice. nice. And then we got, Johnny I think Mitchell. we're pretty good to do anything you want at that point. Wow. Okay. Quick question. Because when I listened to, I heard, and this was only on one song, I heard Leela's influence of Janis Joplin. Was it just me? I got that vibe. One song. Then I, I listened to the that, other yeah. ones and I said, okay, no, no, no. She's, it's, it's, I hear a little bit of influence. She's amazing. I'm sure Leela would say that Janis Joplin is one of her biggest influences okay. for sure. Yeah, eh? among many other classic, you know, oh, amazing sure, rock singers, sure. but you know, the voice that comes from within. So something inside of of Leela sounds a, a lot like Janis Joplin. And but she, it was only on one. No, I, I'm not like I. I to me, I hear Leela. I've never heard a singer like her. Honestly, I really, I really, I admire her as a vocalist, and I admire you guys as a band. I yeah, love it's an it. echo I'm, of you know. Yeah, like I just I I, I can say I was like oh I think you know I I she might be channeling. In that line, maybe. Maybe it was like just a little lick or something. She might be channeling Janice in that one. I just heard it. Well, it's funny you say that. One time we were in uh, east east side of the Berlin Wall, Germany. Okay. And uh, we were playing in an old Soviet ammo factory from World War II. It was very, like, vibey, you wow. know. Con converted into a uh, Converted club. into a venue, yeah. you know, into yeah. a club. Ooh. And yeah. in Singwitz. Singwitz, Germany. Singwitz? I don't even know how to say it. Nobody spoke English, okay. like not a lick. And it's one of those crowds where, you know, it's the light, it's the old fashioned lights where it looks like everybody's covered in Vaseline and <laughs> we're just playing the songs ends. And then we do our show, we're talking to the crowd and it's like, you could hear a pin drop between every single song for an hour and a half. We're going, we're going maybe every now and then after Tom blows a solo, you know, a little clapper was we're like, Oh my God, this is rough. This is they call for an encore at the end. So we all get off the stage. Leela gets up and does Mercedes Benz. A cappella. 
Oh, wow. Oh. The whole room up, tapping feet, clapping, yes. <laughs> saying words I don't even know. So the so power cool. of what you're saying is true, you know? Yeah. It's something that they've heard before. It reminded them, and it just pulled them out of the shell that they had wow. harnessed for 90 minutes of bad hard rock. They were just like... Uh-huh. And then Janis oh, Joplin, listen. all of a sudden, okay, just, now we're talking. <laughs> too funny, wow. Amazing. Get the band off the stage. <laughs> Amazing, yeah. Where, where do we find you guys? I mean, obviously... Everywhere. Like, that's what I was going to say. It's not hard, guys. If you Google Damn Truth, the you'll damn find truth, yeah. everything. I mean, you'll get all the information for our shows and stuff on our website, social media. You know, social Follow media. us on social media, reach out to us. Messages are cool, comments, we're there all the time. Yeah, you guys, uh, you guys like reach reach out to people. Like, yeah, yeah we're DIY. Course, we do I mean, everything ourselves. That's amazing. You know, we're, we try to be connected to our fans. We have a, a fan base which is like incredibly outgoing, and you know, try to give as much as we can back. So, I mean, if you're talking to us, we're gonna talk to you right there on the other side of the phone. So, the best place sell merch too. would be yeah. the fan club actually, because the, we're on all the platforms, and you can reach out to us personally, or you can reach out to the Damn Truth page, and we'll answer you. But the real magic of rock and roll exists in our fan club, where it's you're automatically you're part of a community. You're part of a, we haven't really named the group yet, but you're part of a. Okay, that community is the best way. A truth, a truth or whatever, the truth <laughs> on, army. On we don't know what it is yet, but it's on Facebook. Yeah. It's a group, and if you have a question, guaranteed the fans know the answer and will answer you way faster than we will. They know everything before we do somehow, and it's just yeah. so on the ball, and Amazing. it's a great big family. And if you're interested in this band, you should be there. Yeah, fan club's cool. Well, the fan I'm club is cool. That. Write, write that down for me. People I'm on the fan back. club. <laughs> Meet That's each true. other. Gonna edit it. Gonna like... People in the fan club meet each other. So Canadians yeah. will meet somebody in the UK. They become, did we just become best friends? And then they'll fly over and see us in the UK and stay at that fan's that place. Like oh, it's straight up family God. community. Oh and this God. happens every year, all the time. Every show, so there's people cool. from all over the world and they're visiting each other so through cool. the band, you know, wow. which is just the best part about it. Yeah. That is great. It's good people. Yeah, good people. Yeah. I, I don't know how to thank you guys. Super. The limoncello is enough. limoncello is perfect, man. <laughs> thank we you, thank you man. so much. Thank you it's, for having uh, us. You guys are great. Um, band's great. Uh, wow, just wow. Thank you very much. So, Lisa, thank you. Francesca, thank you. Thank you. Um, thank you. Um, guys, wow. You saw it. You heard it live. Uh, sessions with Steph. Follow us. Follow the damn truth. Let's talk it out. All of the above. Our sponsors. If you want to sponsor, we always take money. Uh, <laughs> thanks for <laughs> always, always. always. There's, we always. There's never a no for that answer. Um, wow. Sessions with Steph with the damn truth was just fantastic. I feel like a little kid right now, and I don't want this feeling to end, so I'm going to keep blabbering. No, I'm kidding. Uh, have a good night. Thank you so much. Thanks a lot, guys. Thanks, Bob. Oh, man. This is so great. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, everybody. Thanks, guys.